right there. That's what this is all about, scooping PCBs out of the Hudson, an enormous project by anyone's standards. We're in the process of removing this summer about 300,000 or more cubic yards of sediment from the bottom of the upper Hudson in a mile and a half stretch from Fort Edwards south. Several hundred people, most of them from the capital region, work 24 hours a day, six days a week, a schedule first implemented two years ago. 2009 was a test, was a pilot to determine whether the best dredging technology could achieve the performance standards that were set for this project. This is, this is probably the most uh, logistically complex environmental dredging project ever undertaken in the United States. 2010 was a review year and the process was refined, making it what you see on the river today. After mapping the river, they use GPS satellites to determine which areas to target and how deep to dig. The claw goes in, the PCBs come out. And you see a lot of spill coming yeah. out of it. I mean, is that, people might wonder, is that dispersing the PCBs? Yeah. Is it spreading them around the river? No, this is water. I mean, and the goal here is to remove sediment, not water. And, and in each dredge bucket, the water is decanted off so that we can achieve the removal of the sediment. But to check on that and be sure that we aren't dispersing PCBs, water monitoring takes place below every dredge location to ensure that any PCB stirred up in the dredging process itself is identified. The sediment that's removed is taken to a processing center where the water is squeezed out, treated, and returned to the river. The dried sediment is loaded onto rail cars and shipped to two out-of-state disposal facilities. Any health concerns for the guys? I mean, working out here every day? You no, know, all of the people who work on this project wear personal protective equipment all day long, and we monitor the entire site for PCBs and anything like that. We have a very strict health and safety plan to ensure the health and safety not only of our workers, but of people in the community as well. Clean fill from surrounding areas is used to replace the sediment that was removed. Plant life has also returned. And you have divers who go down and plant these things. Absolutely. It can only really be done by hand. And we send divers into the bottom of the river to hand plant hundreds of thousands of plants in order to regrow habitat and, and, a, and a food supply for the fish and other wildlife who depend on the river. Every aspect, Behan admits, has the potential for inconvenience for those who live or work near or on the river, though it is impossible to satisfy everyone who says they make every effort. We've taken steps to ensure that noise is abated to the greatest extent possible. We use whisper quiet hospital grade generators. Uh, we also use special lighting to ensure that lighting doesn't cast into the community. It casts only on the work surface. So we've taken every possible step to minimize impacts on the community.